So in this video, we're going to show how we install Shuntmon into a battery so that we can have state of charge. So in the box, you have the shunt and the cable, and we're going to attach that to the Watchmon. So when we do this, we always want to make sure that the shunt is able to be safely attached, which means there's two things. First, we need to make sure the inverter is switched off and the power is disconnected from it so that there is no live power. With the battery, we can't just switch it off. So we're going to have to be fairly careful in what we're doing. And so we use gloves to make sure we can't be electrocuted. So in this case, what you can see, we've already attached the positive lead to the battery. And so in this case here, we've got the large positive cable that's to take the large current. We've also added in here at the same time, our sensing cable for the battery sense voltage that we have plugged into the shunt and we've already attached it. So we put a fuse in it. It only has to be a very low current because we're only measuring the voltage. So one, two or three amps, depending on what you're wanting to use and what you've got available. But we are literally only measuring the voltage itself. We obviously use a ferrule on it and we attach it to just one of the terminal strip. <laughs> Okay, so let's now attach it. So in this particular case here, we've already got, what we're using is a lug so that we're protecting our negative post and bringing it out. And in this particular case, we find it most convenient in this particular battery chemistry to attach the shunt directly using an extra cell link. So in this case, let's now attach one. So we're bringing it in underneath and then we're just screwing it in. So when we're doing that, obviously we're going to use a spanner, which has been wrapped, so it's protected as much as possible, and we'll tighten that on. Okay, so that's now secure. At this point, we're now going to attach the negative lead that now goes back up to the inverter. And just prior to us doing this, we've actually used a metal brush and scrubbed both the bottom of the lug and also the shunt itself and made sure it's got a fresh, clean surface so that there is good contact between the two. So we always make sure this is tight and we protect it when we're using a spanner, bring it on tight and there we have it. So in this case here, we're now having our shunt mon. Our shunt mon is able to take the current through the negative path of the battery back up to the inverter and the positive path is connected through. The next step is that we connect in the power cable. So in this case, we're just plugging in at this end. So this is not to carry current and not to power the shunt, it's just to sense the voltage itself. And so that, that's out of the way. The final step of the hardware installation is that we connect the power. So with the cable you have provided, if you need to extend it, then obviously you follow the same terminal configuration with two twisted pairs. So in this particular case here, we're plugging in the four pin. And over here on the far side where the shunt is on the watch one for, we plug in that one. So the shunt we have indicated with yellow. So it's the cable with the yellow ends so that we know that it's the shunt. So that concludes the installation of the hardware of the shunt one. So let's now go through the software. So with the software of Shuntmon, there is a couple of steps. If you've run the wizard, you may have already pre-configured it. So in this case, we go into the menu. We move into hardware. We move across to the shunt. In this case, we're showing that we've currently got no shunt connected. So now we go into edit. We pick the drop down box. And in this particular case, we come down to shunt mon two and it's the 500 amp shunt. So we typically offer two options at the moment, which is a shunt mon at 500 amps and a shunt mon at 1000 amps. 500 amps is its peak with 400 amps continuous and the 1000 amp shunt is 800 amps continuous, 1000 amps peak. So let's now go into that one and hit save. At this point in time here, what we're seeing is, if we come back to look at this device itself, what you can see here is, you'll notice that there is a red flashing light to show that it's got power coming from the watchmon, and then there is also a green flashing light to show that it's got communication. So that means the shuntmon is receiving signals and requests from the watchmon itself. Okay. Now, if we come back to the software, what you'll see is those same signals are here under the comms ticks. So there is a TX and an RX. So in this particular case, it's showing the counters at increments between one to 250 and back that is actually sending that many different separate payloads to request what the actual voltage and current and state of charge is from the shunt mod. On the second number on the other side of the slush is the RX. That's us receiving the message back from shunt mod and confirming what those values are. 
Okay, so in this case, we've got a successful communication link where we're talking to Shunt1. What that means is, is if we go back to the main graph, you'll see here up in the top right-hand corner when we typically have the device, we're now measuring 51.98 volts and technically almost negligible current. So four milliamps where it's just darting backwards and forwards. So there is a little bit of parasitic load that's being picked up on at the moment. Okay, so let's now go back to Shunt1 and just look at a couple of configuration parameters that are relevant. So again, back here on hardware, in some cases, when you're orientating the shunt, you can't always control the direction. If in your installation you need to do it in reverse, we have in software the ability to have it go in reverse. So in this case here, this is the most direct closest link to the battery, and this one is then feeding out towards the inverter. But if you need to do the opposite, you switch it around because the way you've orientated your cells, we can in software allow this hardware to be back to front. So here on the system, we've got where it says reverse orientation in the software. So currently it's switched off, but if I needed to, because the values are reading as a charge when it's discharging the cell or as a discharge when it's charging the cell, I would change that orientation around by simply coming here and reversing it and pressing save. And that would then switch the current around to be in the opposite way. And as you can see here, I've just done that example and it's now showing that we're charging the cell even though technically it's being discharged slowly at the moment. So let's just reverse that back the way it was originally. The second thing that we've got is we've shown the nominal capacity of the system. So this is suggesting these cells are 460 amp hours. And what we're able to do is suggest the nominal capacity of the system. And that allows it to then try and determine the state of charge. So again, that value is obviously the value that comes from the sticker of what the battery is and what you're expecting to have your capacity as. Below that, we have a number of trigger points, which we'll go through in a future video. But this is the main part of the system. The last and final part is when you're first connecting a shunt to the battery, it has no idea when it's cool and counting, which is counting the current backwards and forwards through the shunt as to what its initial state of charge. And for cells like these ones, which are lithium ion phosphate, because the voltage of the cells does not really, in the middle, give you any indication of the state of charge, you have to provide an estimate. So to do so, we go under metrics, and under metrics here, it's currently showing, it's showing a state of charge of 3%. But in this case, we've given ourselves our own estimate of 45%. So we'll put that in because we think it's about half full and press OK. And that allows it to jump start to that point so that as the system learns what's going on later and actually resets it properly, it can. But in the beginning, before the system knows what it is when we're first commissioning, we give it an approximate estimate of what the state of charge is. So we just press save and we're all done. And that covers the video on how to install the Shunt 1 to start with without any of the advanced settings.